uh, before I get started, I, I, I'd like to uh, issue sort of three preambles to, to this. Number one, um, we're 4 percent of the world's population and we consume more than 25 percent of the fossil fuel that's being consumed in the, on the planet. Uh, that's not sustainable. Number two, uh, the EIA says that uh, <clears throat> in America that almost 50 percent of all energy is consumed by the building sector. And the building sector is responsible for almost 50 percent of the greenhouse gases that are produced every year. Uh, and the third one is, according to the AIA Committee on the Environment, uh, we could reduce the amount of energy that buildings use by 50 percent without adding very much money to the cost of a building at all, primarily through knowledge-based information like building orientation, building configuration, um, <clears throat> energy efficiency, and the embodied energy use of materials. So to get at this is to say that we really need to look at the building sector. And so what I'm going to talk about is a project that addresses the building sector. Uh, this project is the Solar Decathlon. The Solar Decathlon is a international intercollegiate competition uh, among different colleges. It's called the Decathlon because there are 10 contests that each one of the student teams must uh, compete with uh, on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. over a 10-day period of time. Essentially what we're asked to do is to build a zero net energy building. That is, that it's completely self-sufficient in terms of its energy and its water and it has to uh, maintain what they describe as the American lifestyle. Uh, the American lifestyle means things like watching television six hours a day, uh, washing 13 beach towels every morning, uh, cooking a meal for seven, uh, driving around uh, town, the equivalent of about 12,000 miles per year, and having an internal set temperature between 72 and 74. I notice everybody has sweaters on in here. Uh, and maintaining a humidity that's in a very, very narrow range. This is what we call the American lifestyle. So the Department of Energy wanted to uh, look at can we unplug the fossil fuel, plug in the photovoltaic technology, and maintain this kind of lifestyle? What kind of ideas can we generate? For us in the School of Architecture, this was a fantastic idea because it really allowed us to complete the loop of learning. We talk a lot about concepts talk a lot about ideals and new technologies. Uh, and we actually monitor some of those. We simulate those kinds of technologies. But we rarely in school build them. And we rarely get to do post-occupancy analysis. So this allowed us to complete the loop of learning from actually conceiving an idea to designing that idea, testing that idea out, uh, and actually then figuring out what really does or does not work. Um, so to start with, um, <clears throat> the most amazing thing about the Solar Decathlon being on the National Mall was uh, as soon as we finished and we opened doors for the public, more people came through our house than attended the uh, football game at UT on the same weekend uh, by, a number of, by, by twice the amount. So we were really amazed at how many people are really interested in this. So to start with, we uh, did the first one about 10 years ago in 2002. And the rules for the competition at that time were that uh, you had to assemble this building in four days on the National Mall, and you couldn't use heavy equipment. Um, so we decided, well, what are we going to do? We decided to use the old Roman system. Uh, in this case, uh, it was a little different type of Roman system, a block and tackle system. But essentially what we've done is we, we decided not to use any Pacific Northwest wood. Uh, so we went down and we found six junk cars in Austin and took them to Seguin, had them turned into light gauge steel, and the steel is bolted together, and that became the system under which we would put infill panels within the, the project. So we started off, we were going to have, uh, we built a complete uh, redesign of an Airstream trailer, which was our, our kitchen and our bathroom system, and that trucks out onto the site. Then we have a series of these steel columns, and we use those as a way of hoisting uh, the panels into place, and within a few days, we were going to assemble this 800-square-foot uh, building. Here you can see the building on the mall. 
Uh, I love this uh, one right here because you can see our solar barbecue pit. Uh, this is on the side of the building. This was a 3.6 uh, kW uh, photovoltaic system. You can see the Airstream trailer in its dock. The little squares that you see around the bottom of that are the water tanks that we made by hand. And so we're recycling all of the water that we're using within the building. Uh, this is, a, <clears throat> I think we got the award for the best imitation of an engineer by architects. Uh, this was our, our uh, hydronic water treatment system. Uh, so this is a ductless system. This is the whole HVAC system for the building. Uh, we actually added something called an ice battery so that we're freezing, uh, we're using the compressor to freeze uh, water at night so we're not using our compressor during the middle of the day. Um, talk about a tough jury. This is uh, Glenn Merkitt sitting in the middle in the white hat. Uh, in the in the house uh, after we had finished in four days and so uh, the students were actually being reviewed by a, a, a steam panel of jury in the house so it was uh, really how does it really work you couldn't uh, uh, describe it any other way except for the way it is uh, very interesting about this particular system this was an open plan system so all the mechanical and electrical is in the structural system so all the panels are much like you would think of an open platform in a uh, computer system. That is that we could move the walls, move the floors around, and each one of those could be picked up by four people. So it made it very, very uh, easy to do. Uh, we did very well in that competition. We won second in design. Uh, but one of the things we figured out when you try to make an IKEA house, which is what this was, a flat box IKEA house, is there's lots of parts. It was lots of labor. Uh, my students used to say at night, my bruises have bruises. Uh, and we decided we need to do something that's a little more, uh, less labor intensive and didn't have as much infiltration. So in 2005, when we uh, entered the competition again, uh, we decided to put something together that would have less labor. So uh, we decided to come up with a design that would be put together in four chunks uh, because we have to build a house here in Austin transport it to Washington, D.C., uh, put it together in a couple of days, uh, occupy it for a week, and then bring it back. So in this case, we uh, made uh, the, the module of the building eight and a half feet so it could go down the highway without a wide load. And the students invented this uh, kind of roller system out of some bowling ball technology where it actually is uh, picked up by a crane because the competition allowed now cranes in the second year of the competition. Uh, and would play to sit onto these rolls and the students would then get together and push the building in, uh, into uh, place and it would snap together since we called it the snap house. Uh, this particular house uh, <coughs> was uh, really interesting in that a lot of new technology and that's what we're doing, we're doing the integration of applied technology. Uh, and so this is, we call this house a kind of a muscle car it, we doubled the number of PV panels that were in the, the system, so we had more energy to do things with. Uh, we did, um, <clears throat> we had a, a, a more interesting uh, HVAC system. In fact, the HVAC system was so energy efficient in this house that it never came on uh, very often, and so we had to add a separate uh, dehumidifier, uh, a chemical dehumidifier, just to maintain the humidity levels that we were looking for within the house. Um, <clears throat> we won the uh, Solar Hot Water Award in this house. We won the BP Award, which is the most prestigious of, of the economic award for which gave us all the free uh, uh, PVs within the, within the house. This is the interior of the house. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we uh, endeavored to do is try to Look at the air quality. Uh, we won the Interior Air Quality Award uh, for the competition. This is all actually mesquite, uh, which is an underutilized wood in uh, Texas. The students built the furniture uh, and built the cabinets within the, 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 the building. Uh, and as you can see in the little black lines, this is where the, the, the building snaps together uh, to form these uh, types of systems. Um, <clears throat> interestingly enough about this house, uh, all of the, we, we endeavor not to use any glues within the house, so all of these are mechanically fastened together. So instead of thinking about nails, you think about things like bolts. 
uh, so that you can disassemble and reassemble. Um, and <clears throat> in 2007, we discovered again, because we get a, a feedback on each one of these, that the 2002 house had too much infiltration, too many parts. When we did the 2005 house, uh, we had less infiltration, but still too much infiltration, too much labor. So we endeavored to have something that we understood the way that you have to do with the modular home. That is, you have to put it together in eight hours. Uh, and the reason is because you can't have the, the people stay overnight when they're working. So in this case, uh, you can see the house that came out as a one modular trailer. Uh, we built it out at, uh, you can see we built this out at uh, um, the Mueller Center. And uh, this particular house won second in engineering in the competition. Uh, what was interesting about this is that we had a, more of an interdisciplinary team. So half the team were engineers. Uh, this is the interior of the house. These, in this case, the interior is fiberboard and bamboo. Uh, these are the kinds of systems. Again, in this, we won the BP award. We won the hot water award again. Uh, and in conclusion, what we did with these projects is uh, what's sustainable about doing something for 10 days? Uh, well, our knowledge is sustainable. And actually, all three of these houses still exist. This one exists at, uh, <coughs> out at, um, in Fort Davis. This is uh, out uh, the observatory. So the house is being used for the astronomers as a uh, scientific experiment. Thank you.